I heard that Ryzen 5 is still going to be slower than Intel. Oh, not so fast, Morty. You heard Timmy Joe. We've got a some adventures going, Morty. Just you, me, and Ryzen. Sometimes we're going to play video games. Sometimes we're going to stream on Twitch, but never with Intel. You know why? It's too expensive. I take it easy, Rick. It's just a computer. Oh, and it gets cooler, Morty, because first Ryzen 5, then <coughs> graphics cards, and then Vega graphics. It's going to be awesome offerings from full ah. course, 16 threads, all the way half price. A lot of Intel. Razor 5 is going to be awesome. We're going to get some of that Szechuan sauce. And we're going to play video games. It's going to be awesome. And Intel will never recover, Morty. It's going it's to be great. Uh Oh, hi guys. Um, it's a pretty cool day. I finally got my Ryzen 5 test kit here. It's a it's not a box made of wood, but it's still a pretty cool box. Newegg.com, y'all. And uh, Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon did a personalized Rick and Morty intro for my channel. Like, how cool is that? Let's just dive right into Ryzen 5 here, because that's what you guys are here to see, right? Oh, what do you got here? Got the, oh, Ryzen 5. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, there we go. Oh, they just, they didn't even package the CPU or put any bubble wrap. Uh, Ryzen 5 chip right here, official stuff. And I'm not going to be one of those uh, reviewers that holds embargoes. No, we're going to jump right into the benchmarks right now. And I'm going to give you all the awesome specs and cool stuff from the Ryzen 5 system. So let's just, just dive right into it. Um, okay, I can't, I can't lie to you guys anymore. I just... I, I wrote five with a, a paint marker on the a Phenom CPU. This is just cardboard. Uh, I don't have a Ryzen 5 system uh, here to test because I'm not popular enough yet, but that doesn't mean that I can't virtualize that shit. Awesome. Okay, because I don't have the five chip, but I've got a seven chip and I've got a motherboard that lets me cut out CPU cores and lets me cut out hyper threading and clock wherever I want to clock. So I've got real world results because I edited a video on an LG phone yesterday uh, using what would technically be considered a Ryzen 1400 system interesting enough and i also uh clocked anywhere between a ryzen 1200x to a 1600x and ran all kinds of benchmarks and stuff and yeah somebody else already did this video so let's just get that out of the way but uh you know what linus i don't care if you wear socks and sandals you don't do your own benchmarking anymore you don't do your own video editing you don't even write your own scripts probably or if you do it's uh, based off of data that someone else procured for you one of your minions you don't have a Ryzen system set up at your desk or if you do you'd probably barely use it because you have Razer sending you all those amazing laptops so I'm gonna give you real world results because I edited a video, I did some browsing, I did some gaming, I did all kinds of stuff using these virtualized CPUs. And I've got some really good news for y'all people that are waiting for Ryzen 5 and waiting to spend a hell of a lot less money on a lot more cores. So let's get right into it. Uh, so I had a guy named Greg from Salazar Studios. I don't know if you've seen him. He was all like, Blah, blah, blah. Ryzen's not gonna be Core i5. Ryzen 5 will not outperform Intel's modern i5 lineup in modern gaming. Well, that's fine and dandy. You're probably right, Greg, even though you wear really nice muscle shirts. What I'm getting at here is if you're this close to Core i5 performance in games, but you're future proofing yourself with more cores, and you've got Core i7 like multi-threaded performance at a Core i5 price, isn't that beneficial to everyone? Okay, because even at the Ryzen 1400 that's gonna have four cores and eight threads, you're getting a Core i7 basically for $169.99. Isn't that cool? Well, I think it is. Because games are going to start requiring more cores and get optimized for Ryzen and get optimized for, for higher end chips because AMD made this initiative. 
and it's going to make for way cooler games in the future. But for now, for the layman, you can still get a pretty damn cheap core uh, i7 equivalent in the Ryzen 5 1400. And if you want to do a little bit of overclocking, you can get some damn good performance out of it. And, uh, you know, you still get to have the ability to video edit or Photoshop or Lightroom or do stuff like that or have a million Chrome windows open and still get some awesome raw performance, as I will demonstrate with some benchmarks in a second. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, I edited a video yesterday using four cores, uh, eight threads, and a lower gigahertz. Uh, I was somewhere in the area of 3.4 gigahertz or 3.5 gigahertz if you count the ability for uh, Ryzen 1400 to uh, turbo boost up to 3.4-ish. Uh, and I didn't really feel like anything was different with my system. Uh, I, I maybe felt like a few things loaded a little slower or maybe some effects loaded a little slower but it felt very usable that means that as a creator i could have spent half the money and still had the raw performance to do some pretty cool things with the ryzen 5 setup uh you know in the 1400 range especially if i'm you know adept at uh, overclocking because I bet the Ryzen 1400, the Ryzen 5 1400 is going to be able to hit somewhere in the area of 3.8 gigahertz, no problem, or, you know, higher with some, uh, water cooling or something like that. And then that's a steal of a deal because the core i5 6600 or 7600 is still $240. So for $80 less, you're getting you know an awesome CPU in my opinion. And gigahertz is a lot. You know you can overclock a core i5 7600 to probably somewhere in the area of 4.8 gigahertz. But eventually cores will definitely matter. And this isn't fail dozer. This isn't you know something where the cores don't really add up and performance wise so it's a good time to be a pc enthusiast so why don't we jump into the benchmarks so you can read the raw performance data that i got on each set of ryzen 5 systems and even the ryzen 3 the uh the 1200x and uh or, or what's rumored to be you know hopefully it's still the same architecture and stuff like that for ryzen 3 but the, you know it's, it's still pretty cool like only had four cores going and it still felt pretty speedy to me and uh then when we come back i'll give you my definitive answers on using this day to day and how i felt you know jumping between the different versions of the you know ryzen 3 ryzen 5 and ryzen 7. So, pretty cool benchmarks, eh? I don't know, when you look at benchmarks, they all start to look the same, but uh, really, we can gauge from this that we see a marginal decrease in performance every time you took cores away, threads away, or you know a little bit of CPU frequency away, which makes sense. Now, I'm crossing my fingers that AMD is using the same architecture across the board. It makes sense that maybe some uh, Ryzen 7 
CPUs, a couple of the cores don't work out quite as well, and they make them the uh, 1600X, and you know they turn two of the cores off, and that that kind of trickles down the line. Um, and I hope so because that means that, like me, I bought the 1700, not an X version, not the 1700X or 1800X, and I'm getting 1800X like performance. That should mean that you with a 1600X or uh, you know with a 1600 or 1400, you should be able to get the same FPSs in games when you overclock, which is pretty cool because games aren't really using, as you could tell from you know me showing you these benchmarks, much more than four cores, eight threads because that's been the norm for so long. But looking into the future, Core i5s are going to start to look pretty long in the tooth when they don't have eight threads, I think. And uh, when games you know, start to be ask more of the CPU and Ryzen is delivering it. And right now, it's a good time to just go out and you could buy even the, uh, the 1400 at $169.99 overclock the crap out of it and uh, put a decent graphics card in and I think you'd be very very happy and when I was editing like I said with the you know the 1400 equivalent I didn't really notice much of a slowdown now that might change if I was editing 4k that might change if I was editing some huge images or something like that uh, but that's what these upper echelon of uh, you know more expensive CPUs are for and you'll kind of know where you fit in. If you're just a gamer, I think you're going to be very, very happy with maybe the 1500X at $189.99 instead of spending $240 on a Core i5 that's able to overclock that has half the threads. You know, I think it's a no brainer at this point where you should spend your money. And I'll have some, once there's actual results out, and once I'm able to get my hands on a, a Ryzen 5, I think I'm going to do a build video for under $1,000. A few people have asked about that. And uh, I'm going to show you what you can get for, you know, case to CPU to RAM to everything to graphics card uh, for about $1,000 using the Ryzen system. I'm Timmy Joe. I hope you love this video. Like, comment, rate, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I've got social media. There's lots of cool videos that I've been doing lately, including uh, this one or this one or whatever. And there'll be some videos that pop up after this. Uh, go check them out. I'm Timmy Joe. You guys have a good day and thank Lord Ryzen for all the performance.